There are some people who believe that in order to get into filmmaking, you need to have a large budget with high end equipment, but that just isn't true. You can get into filmmaking with almost anything from a DSLR to an iPhone or even, in some cases, an old camcorder like this one. I'm Big Bad Beaver, and in today's Big Bad video, we're going to be making the most out of one megapixel. This is the Sony DCR SR85. It's a camera from 2008 in their Handycam lineup that, for the time, was actually a pretty good package. It features a touchscreen LCD monitor, 25 times optical zoom, a Carl Zeiss lens, built-in 60 gigabyte hard drive, low light shooting capabilities, and a one megapixel CCD sensor, which is proudly promoted with a big yellow sticker. I found this camera buried in a junk drawer while I was cleaning up around here, and after seeing it, it made me wonder if a camera like this had any value in 2021. Pretty much any smartphone released in the last couple years will have a built-in camera that stomps all over this in terms of resolution and quality, so I thought it would be interesting to see what type of image I could pull out of this and what working with it today would be like. Before we continue on, I think it's important to put in perspective exactly what one megapixel is because one megapixel is one million pixels. That's exactly how many pixels the sensor in the Sony camera has. Now, if we compare that to the camera I'm using to film this, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K, uh, that has 21 megapixels. So, do the math. Now, that 21 megapixel sensor is able to produce an image of 6144 by 3456. 4K resolution is 3840 by 2160. A 1080p image is even smaller, one-fourth the size of a 4K image. And with only one megapixel, this Sony camera can only record at up to 720 by 480 resolution. You can barely see it on this guy. That's how small it is. So with a resolution that small, I wasn't necessarily expecting super sharp images to come out of this camera. And after reviewing some test footage I took in a variety of lighting conditions, my hypothesis was pretty much confirmed. Ignoring resolution, one major issue I found with this camera is the way that it handles highlights and shadows. The roll-off is extremely sharp, and if something does become overexposed or underexposed, the camera simply doesn't record enough data for you to be able to recover that information in post. Now this makes color grading a very difficult process, and I never felt like I was able to get quite the right look I wanted out of this camera. It doesn't help that the camera doesn't give you much control over how the image comes out. Now you can manually adjust the focus with a hard-to-use on-screen slider, but that's about it. You aren't able to input a shutter speed, you aren't able to adjust the f-stop, you can't change the ISO. It's very locked down. All of this is handled automatically by the camera itself, and if you want to change any of this, you have to use a very vague exposure slider on here, which means you're limited in the creative choices you have to make. Now, in the camera's defense, it was never really meant for this sort of thing. It was meant to be convenient. It was meant for families to use to, to record graduations or holidays or, or birthday parties. It was never meant for you to go down and use it as an actual film camera. It doesn't expect the user to know what ISO or shutter speed is. There are a few camera modes that you can choose from which, based on your intent and the lighting conditions, can give you a pretty good image for 2008. but. Other than that, it's point and shoot. On that note of convenience, however, one thing that I absolutely loved about this camera was the built-in hard drive. With how small these video files are, I have literally thousands of minutes of record time, and being able to just directly plug into a computer and pull your files off of the camera directly was incredibly convenient. Using this actually made me want professional cameras today to have built-in storage of some kind, so that I could just easily plug in and go. That would make things so much simpler. Additionally, the touch screen itself was actually quite responsive for a resistive screen, and the screen itself rotates and spins to help when shooting at awkward angles. Now, the resolution on this screen is very low, and it doesn't get that bright, but it was fine enough for outdoor use. One thing I actually didn't test at all yet was the built-in microphone on this thing. I, I, I should probably test that out, I think. All right, this is a test of the Sony SR85 microphone. Uh, I'm not sure how this sounds. I hope it sounds good. Um, supposedly it's a dual microphone setup, so should have some good noise. And we're in a pretty quiet environment, so this should be fairly clear, I would think. I hope. 
Now, I recognize comparing the Sony to the Blackmagic or even an iPhone is completely unfair, but I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> In this test shot of a monster figurine, you can see some nice rim lighting with a subtle colored gradient in the background. You'll also notice some bokeh in the bottom of the figure and the back of its head being blurred out. Overall, it's a clean shot. The Sony, however, does not make this look good. Now, this was done with the camera in auto mode and the amount of noise captured is unreal. Once again, there's very little clarity in the low lights of this image, meaning that things get lost on the right side of its face. Now, after seeing how poorly that came out, I was kind of able to figure out what makes this camera break and using that information and taking its low resolution into consideration, I decided to create a short tech themed video reel with this camera and honestly, I think it looks pretty good. Now with some patience and some tweaks in Premiere, I was able to get the reel actually looking pretty decent, I think. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section below for sure. I'll leave you guys with this video reel. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.